Good morning. Today's book we're going to talk about is Westward for Women. Author, Nancy Wilson Ross, copyright 1985. Publisher, North Point Press, pages 199. The author's extensive research reveals to us the role of women that provided in the American West. Now their voices in giving accounts of the way life was during pioneers days and those trails uh, on wagon trains and what they had to do in order to um, start a new life in a new colony. Now, uh, this allows the reader to get an accurate account as the many diaries of the pioneer women in, inside this book shows us their uh, what they did for daily chores, how the women were portrayed in society, what they wore, how they treated the children, and um, the struggle they went through traveling over miles and miles of rough terrain in order to, to establish these new settlements and experiencing overwhelmingly tragedy along the way. Now, some of that was with the Indians and some of that was this death along the, the way. And um, these are just part of their journey. Um, hard work and uh, discomfort, uh, joining the men in the dugging the holes to sleep in at night or to help build the cabins. That's a lot of wear and tear for women, especially mothers who've been through pregnancy and everything and also taking care of the children. <laughs> That's a lot for the women. I mean, let's just be truthful here. Women were the core of the family unit. I mean, at least that's what I say. Um, when Indians came and forced them to provide, uh, provide food and clothes to them because they were, uh, were naturally hungry, uh, when especially they just lived off of, um, you know, uh, deer, elk, um, any birds or any if there's a, a lake or a pond nearby, if there was fish, that's what they did. Some of them um, berries, uh, fruits and nuts and things like that. Now, um, when Indians would come, especially with uh, these new settlements, uh, the men would have to leave their wives and hopefully sneak out and uh, join other men to find reinforcements, whether that's other uh, communities nearby that would come and help to defend their sites, or the military would come and, and force the Indians off, off their, their land and w leave the, the new pioneers and the settlements alone. Now, from page 16 in this book, uh, A Woman's Diary, sh she says, I think I ha if I had the company of some lively female acquaintances, I would feel better. I mean, most of these settlements, the women were lonely. And if they, their, their nearest neighbor may be five miles down the road or even 10, um, you just never know. Uh, another diary passage on page 66 and 67, this is from Mary. She says, um, I scarcely, I scarcely do anything from morning till night without being seen by some of them. And I, she meant Indians. Sometimes I feel I cannot endure it any longer. They were, they lived every day out of fear. Now, Indians are just, they were curious, in my point of view. Uh, they're curious. They just wanted to know uh, everything they could about, uh, uh, you know, these new white people <laughs> coming onto their land and settling down as if it was nothing. Um, and, you know, I'm sure that they got upset and everything. They didn't want anybody coming onto their land. And that's true, too. But without progress, you have to um, you have to go and travel to areas, uh, you know, that are normally not on on the map and start new new colonies new communities you know and and you have to dig in the land you have to build you have to uh kill you know uh deer or uh bison depending on what area they're they're surviving on but i mean birds and fish i mean just as the indians and i'm, I'm sure that they didn't like that they had competition now for their daily food and, and she goes on, Mary goes on to say, yet this is a beautiful country, uh, still a kind of a, 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 a gloom seems to pervade it as if nature was asleep or rather the face of the ground. The whole country is in um, supposed to be enjoying a long Sabbath. 
and yet they have to work. And, you know, these are, most of these uh, settlers had, you know, uh, religious backgrounds and they believed in the Lord and all of the things and they tried to do what the Ten Commandments wanted them to. Uh, but, you know, if something had to be done, it had to be done whether it was the Sabbath or not. Now, the author also gives us a good clue about uh, Sacagawea and her role in helping the pioneers set up communities in virgin country and by guiding the Lewis and Clark expedition across America in 1804 to 1806. This Shoshone woman was a slave of President Jefferson's envoy, uh, along with 29 men. And she would never have made it, or they should would have never made it to the Western Ocean if it wasn't for Sacagawea. And so, and they would not be able to claim the Western territory and in the name of the U.S. Sacagawea also was an interpreter with other Indians. And in, you know, the in the winter, she organizes dances and to help everybody get along. She was like um, the liaison between uh, the uh, new settlers and the established uh, Indians in the, in the area and trying to smooth, ruffle feathers or smooth uh, uh, anger or anything like that. So um, I really like Sacagawea. Um, <laughs> and anyway, uh, in motherhood, uh, you know, the uh, women had to take care of the house, the laundry, feeding the family, and it all took a toll on their bodies. And it showed age on their faces. And most pioneer women's, you'd look at them and they'd look 50 if you saw pictures of them. And they're actually only like 28. I mean, that's what all of the work and the hard work did to them. And rest assured, women were not uh, arrogant. They knew what they were getting into when they accepted their lot in life and marrying these men and, and, and trying to go to start a whole new life for themselves. It, it was independent, and yet it was accepting. They had to uh, do with little. I mean, especially if the Indians stole a lot of their clothes or a lot of their bed linen and things like that. But they don't care. You know, what puts a smile on their face is a gentle word from their husbands, a well-prepared me uh, meal for their children and having them say thank you. And once in a while, sharing a conversation with a group of other women so they could all gossip and, and get together for celebrations, whether it's somebody else getting married or somebody had a new baby or whatever. Um, in outlying areas uh, during the gold rush, season, you know, they towns kind of grew really fast and uh, because of the boom, uh, so many people were coming and going and they had saloons, they had hotels and all of these miners uh, and Asian miners too, they, they built these, um, these, uh, what do you call them? Uh, respectable saloons, some of them. And some of them had girls dress up, uh, in their finest and to buy them drinks and that's just to bring in money into the saloons and some of them like the oriental uh for the miners that worked in the coal mines and all that uh they had uh, oriental ladies dressed up and and they also had opium dens and uh you know bars and and stuff like that so it, and most of that you you can see that they just wanted the men and the, um the miners and all of that to stay in town um, and help their growing businesses. And most of these are women. They were women owned, especially the saloons and the, and the opium dens and, and the parlor houses, you know, it was all women owned, you know, for them. So I, it, to me, I love history. Anybody who knows me, I know, uh, knows me, knows that I just love history and reading this book along with the, the other book that I just posted a couple of weeks ago, um, learning about history and, and what these women had to go through and, and the men had to go to or go through and, and the loss of men as if they got in fights with the Indians or other uh, like uh, gamblers or other uh, looters wanting to take all they had and whatever little money they have. I mean, people died. I mean, and it was there was really no set law to stop them. It was, you know, grab what you can and get the heck out of there, you know, type of thing. So I love these things about knowing this. It just gives me 
ideas for my own writing that I, I, I do on the side. Uh, but if you are uh, looking for uh, information on uh, how the women and what their uh, contributions were in the West and, and growing new communities and, you know, the rugged terrain, what they wore, uh, you know, and things like that, Westford, Westward the Women is a book for you. Um, the, uh, the cover shows a photograph or an illustration, I should say, uh, of, of what uh, houses and cabins might have looked like, uh, what they wore during the time and stuff like that. So if you are interested, I would go ahead and it, it's this book can be ordered from anywhere, Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, any online uh, bookstore will research it and bring this book to you. So until next time, this is Robin S. Garland. Bye-bye.